On the 2nd of November, the Workers' Party Central Executive Committee agreed to form a disciplinary panel to look into the admissions made by Raisa Khan in Parliament by way of personal statement on the 1st of November, 2021. In the course of its work, the disciplinary panel invited members of the party to share their views on the matter ahead of submitting its report to the CEC for deliberation. Before the panel could submit its recommendations to the CEC on the 30th of November, Raisa tendered her resignation from the party and by extension resigned as a member of parliament. As the CEC had not received her resignation in writing by then, it proceeded to deliberate the recommendations of the disciplinary panel. The CEC voted overwhelmingly that she would have been expected to resign on her own accord, failing which she would be expelled from the party. There have been some queries from members of the public about the knowledge the party had about the original speech Raisa delivered on the 3rd of, October, 3rd of August and what action was taken thereafter. I will address these directly. In the course of preparing for her speech on the motion titled Empowering Women, on the Workers' Party motion entitled Empowering Women on the 3rd of August, Raisa Khan was put on notice through the Workers' Party usual pre-parliamentary processes to be ready to substantiate her account that she had followed a victim to the police station in the event she was queried in the course of the debate. After Raisa delivered her speech and in the course of the days that followed, I asked Raisa to make her best efforts to contact the victim or to contact the individuals who brought the victim's case to her attention and to extend the necessary information to Minister of State for Home Affairs Desmond Tan, who had sought more details on the matter in Parliament. Initially, Raisa stuck to her untruth in her communication with me. After being repeatedly pressed, a number of new facts and disturbing personal revelations were disclosed. These concerned Raisa's sexual assault, an event which was unknown to the party leadership at that time, and other related matters of a deeply personal nature. Raisa shared that her personal trauma and sexual assault explained why she was not truthful about accompanying the victim to the police station as she had asserted in her speech on the 3rd of August. She admitted this to the party leadership about a week after she had delivered her speech. Of immediate concern to me was the fact that Raisa had not previously informed her family members of her sexual assault, which had traumatized her greatly. In my judgment, it was important that she did so before she could fully address the reasons behind her untruthful conduct in Parliament and to correct the record. In view of her sexual assault and my assessment of her state of mind, I was prepared to give her the space necessary to address the matter with her loved ones. Raisa came down with an episode of shingles in September and did not attend Parliament that month. It was nonetheless made known to her before the parliamentary sitting in October that any parliamentary clarification on this matter was hers to make in her capacity as an elected member of parliament. When questioned by the Minister for Home Affairs in Parliament on the 3rd of October, I beg your pardon, on the 4th of October, Raisa repeated an untruth on the parliamentary record which was wholly inconsistent with the revelations she had shared with the party leadership after the 3rd of August. Almost immediately after Parliament adjourned in October, Raisa agreed with the party leadership that she had to set the record right forthwith. I shared with her that it was the correct thing to do. The next earliest opportunity to do so in Parliament was on the 1st of November, when the member made the personal explanation, Understanding Order 25. Raisa sent her resignation letter to me on the 30th of November, 2021, and I replied to it by way of letter the next day. I wish to end this statement by apologizing to the residents of St. Kang for this turn of events. I also apologize to all victims of sexual assault who have been hurt over this matter. 
For the party, public trust and confidence in a sitting Workers' Party MP is fundamental to the ethos of the party as a rational, responsible and respectable institution in Singapore politics. Singaporeans have the right to expect the best efforts from Workers' Party MPs and we should never take their faith, trust and confidence in us for granted.